Hey guys, welcome back to our project. In the last part, we have added the functionality to upload a file from our client side. And now we need to implement this download page. This one. So at first we need to create an API to get the file details. And then we need to make a request from our server side to get the data. And based on that data, we are going to render the page. Okay, so let's just go to our backend and create the API first. Go to server, go to routes, go to files.ts, fine. So create a new route. Okay. Cool. So it should be a get request. So router.get. And I should get the ID as the param. So slash colon ID. Fine. And then the function. Request, comma, response. Just make an arrow function. Nice. The function should be an asynchronous function. So just use async. Cool. Let's use a try catch block. Then inside this try catch block, first I need to grab the ID from the request.params. And then I need to check if the file does exist with this ID or not. If the file does not exist, I need to return 404. And if the file exists, I need to return the details. Let's do it. So inside this try catch block, just grab the id first. Const id is request.params.id. Fine. And then I need to check if the file does exist or not. So file dot, the file is the model already imported. Find by id and just pass the id. Okay, if the file does exist, it will return me the file object, else it will return me null. So let's grab the response, const file, and also make this await, cause it's an asynchronous call. Nice. And then I need to check if the file is a falsy value, it means the file does not exist. So return res.status, what is status code 404, and the JSON is message something like the file does not exist cool but if the file does exist i need to return with the status code uh, 200 success dot json and now i need to return the specific shape which we have defined in our i file interface so let me show you again i file or uh, types types yep look at this we need to return this specific shape so let's copy this and go here and put it inside this JSON and now let's modify the value. So the name is file.name and you know what we can actually destructure this. So before this const destructure from the file. So press control and space. Let's grab the file name then format. Yep. And then size in bytes. So size in bytes. Cool. Let's pass the values. So name is file name. And then the size in bytes is size in bytes. So we don't need to pass the value. Yes, six syntax. And then the format is also format. So we don't need to pass the value. And then the ID is ID. Cool. Pretty good stuff. Let's save this. And that's it. And if anything goes wrong, just return the status code 500, which is the server error. So 500. And the message is server error. Cool. Save this and now let's test this endpoint. Let's go to a browser, just a normal get request. We can do this from the browser. Let's copy the file ID and then let's make a request to localhost 8000 slash API slash files slash the ID and enter. And I should get the file. Yep. The name, size in bytes, format, and the ID. Fine. And now just go to client side and implement this page. Inside this client, we need to create a new route. So just go inside the source, inside the pages. And here I need to create the route. But before that, let's see the structure of the route. Cool. So just look at the route. This is localhost 3000, which is our base endpoint. And then slash download, slash the ID. Now this ID can be any file ID. Basically, it's a dynamic route. And how to create the dynamic route in Next.js? It's really simple. As the Next.js is based on file-based routing, it's really easy. Just go inside the Pages folder. And first, we need to create the download. So inside this Pages, let's create a new folder, which is Download. Cool. And then inside this Download, we need to create the dynamic route. So let's create another folder and put a square bracket. Inside this square bracket, you can pass the name of the param which is in this case ID or file ID, whatever. 
I'll be going for ID and that's it. Inside this ID folder, you need to create the home page or the index.psx. That's it. Done. Close the sidebar, create a functional component, RAFC, fine. Just write something like download page and let's try to refresh the page. I should see this download page. Yep, nice. So our route is set up and now we need to make the request to get the file details and I'm gonna make the request in our server side. So let's see how server side rendering works in Next.js. Okay, just look at this documentation. I'll put the documentation in the description box. Now I'm not going to talk about this in details as I have already made two videos on this Next.js data fetching techniques. Please watch those. Anyway, let me give you a brief description about this. Let me just zoom in. Fine. So in Next.js, there are three unique functions you can use to fetch data for pre-rendering. First one is get static props. This function is used to generate static page. So if you need to generate a static page in your project, something like you know FAQ page or an about page, which is not changed dynamically, in that case you can use this get static props function. But this function is only run on build time. It means that if you need to change the data at some point, you need to rebuild the whole project. Okay, and then the second function is get static paths. This is same as the get static props, but this is for dynamic routes. Again, this function is run on build time. And then the third one is get server side props. This is used for server side rendering. And this function is run on every request. So every time you refresh the page, this function is gonna run. But one important part, you can either use get static props or get server side props in a page. Okay, we just can't use both. And then there is another technique which is called ISR, incremental static regeneration, which is a combination of get static props and get server side props. So if you need to change the data after an interval, you can use that technique. Okay, so that's a brief description about this technique. Just read out the documentation guys. This is very beautifully documented. Anyway, now tell me which function we are gonna use in this page. It has to be get server set props. Every time you go to the page, it's a new ID and with that ID, you need to get the new details. So let's see how it works. Just go to get server set props. Nice. So you need to define a function which is get server set props and we also need to export this out. And then just look at this. We need to return a specific shape. So inside this object, we need to create a key which is props. Inside this props, whatever you define will be passed inside this page. If it seems confusing, don't worry. Let me just copy the function. And just go to our page. Cool. Let's put it here. Nice. The context has a type of get server set props context. Fine. So inside this, just use a try catch block to make the asynchronous call. Just use await. Import Axios should be auto imported. Yep. It's a get request so axios.get. So axios and then just copy the URL from the browser. This is localhost 3000 slash API slash files slash the ID. And put it here inside this template string. Nice. Now important part is inside this get server set props or any data fetching techniques function, you need to pass the whole URL. So what I mean by that is you also need to pass this base URL. Okay. So this is localhost 8000. It should be coming from the environment variable, but I'll change that later. And then this ID should be dynamic. And how can I get the ID? You can get this ID from this context. So const this structure from context dot query. Yep. And just grab the ID. And this ID is the same as this dynamic route, which is this ID. If you make this file ID, you will grab this as file ID. Cool. So just put this ID, fine, save this and then just grab the data. So const data and now we need to return this data as the prop. So let's create a variable outside this try catch block. So let's make this late file, fine, save this and then after getting the data, assign the file with the data. Nice. If anything goes wrong, just log out the error. So error dot response dot data and the file is an empty object nice and then just return inside this props the file file is file and in es6 you can remove the value nice so what i'm doing instead of get server set props and making a request to this url that will give me the file details and then just return the data as the file and now inside this index page I mean inside the next page, I can grab the file as the properties. Okay, we can also set the type of this index page. 
which is next page so be auto imported nice inside this generic just define the types of the properties so file it should be the i file should be imported nice that's it and now let's try to you know render the name of the file first so file dot name let's see refresh the page there should not be any error refresh the page and yep i have my file data fingerpoints.png now let's design the page and render the whole data okay so what i'm gonna do inside this props i'm also gonna destructure the file which is format comma name comma size in bytes comma id we also need the id because we are gonna make a download button okay and then just remove this file dot name instead i am first gonna check if i have the id or not why because if the id is undefined it means the file is an empty object if the file is an empty object that means i got an error got it and if you got an error what does it mean it means it means it is either a server error or the file does not exist so inside this curly brace just check if i don't have the id it means the file does not exist so inside the span just oops file does not exist check the url cool but if the file does exist inside this fragment what you need to do oh okay where it is and so this fragment first i'm gonna swipe image which is the download image and then an age one something like you know, your file is ready to be downloaded and then the render file component and then a download button so let's do that first an image and this image should be coming from the public folder inside this public inside this images folder i have this file download.png so just render this slash images slash file uh -huh, download dot png i have a typo in download fine and then an age one something like your file is ready to be downloaded and then the render file component so render file find it needs the file as a property and we need to pass this as the object let's create an object and pass the format comma size in bytes of comma name comma size in bytes that's it my typescript is happy and then i need to show a download button so button inside this just pass the download as the text again cool save this and let's see okay refresh the page fine i got my file i got the data and now let's try to make with the wrong id let's do a couple of letters from the id yeah look at this oops the file doesn't exist take the url fine so let's try to add the tailwind so let's go to the parent div and add class name it has to be a flex container the flex direction should be column the item should be horizontally centered and also justify centers for vertically centered as the direction is column and then just add some padding vertically which is three unit the space between the items is four unit that is fine the background change this to gray 800 just add a rounded border so rounded md then just add some box shadow so shadow excel and the width is around 96 unit that's it save this and then just target this image the file download image just add class name just add the width and the height which is around 16 unit and the height is also around 16 unit and then add the age one which is the message let's make this extra large so text excel cool and then the render file component we don't need to touch this and then the button so that class name the buttons should have the same styles as the previous buttons but here's an improvement we can't just copy and paste the whole class names right that should have a better approach and there is that is called tailwind component so just go to the home page which is the index page yep yeah look at this inside this button i have all these class names and we need the same button in different pages so what we can actually do we can make this a tailwind component not a react component tailwind component let me show you just copy all these classes of this button and then just go to global source css cool here look at this block 
you might have this block commented out so just uncomment this and then inside this components layer we can create the new class okay so just remove the class and the class should be button in our case and then look at this inside this angle bracket we have this tailwind classes so just remove this and put all our button classes that's it and now we can use this button as a separate class just save this and then just go to index.tsx or download page and here the button class name should be button just save this and now let's see refresh the page hey look at this and now let's refresh all the other classes of button so just go to the home page and remove this button classes instead add button that's it mm -hmm. you also don't need this button instead just upload new file refresh this with the button save this and then just go to anywhere else no yeah pretty good so that's it for this part in the next part we are going to add the functionality to download the file so see you in the next part bye